we move in such a fast paced world. And when you're not intentional about setting your goals for how you want to show up for people in your life, whether this is at work or even like with my kids at home, if we're not intentional and slow down, even just for a fraction of a second, like write down a couple of words about who we want to be in that moment, then I think that we no longer have control over who we want to be. We just respond in the moment. Welcome to Vibecast, the podcast that dives deep into the heartbeat of workplace culture. I'm your host, Christy Skutnik. Join me in conversations with extraordinary leaders as we unravel their experiences, both positive and negative, that have impacted workplace culture. This podcast is more than storytelling. It's about actionable insights. Are you ready to transform the vibe at your workplace? Let's go. Today, I had the pleasure to sit down with Megan Galloway. Megan is on a mission to make our workplace a more authentic and human place for current and future generations to thrive. She founded her consulting company, Everleader, with the vision to change the future of work. She wants to make work better by helping organizations to connect their teams, empower their leaders, and create intentional cultures. And if you check out Megan on LinkedIn, you'll see her taking to the stage to deliver her message in her pink suit, which is a fave of mine. I think a vibe is like the feeling that you have when you're doing something or anything. So it's like that kind of sense that you have as like if it's a work vibe, it's like while you're doing the actual work, how do you feel while you're doing it with the people that you're doing it with and with the processes that you're using? Like, what's that invisible kind of energy that exists as you're doing the things in your day to day? I love that. So as you think about that as kind of like grounding us in the conversation, I would love to hear a few stories from you about that feeling or energy that you've experienced in the workplace, whether it's been you creating that vibe for others or you experiencing that vibe from others whether it be a blooper, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what's out there, because we've all experienced it. And I think many times experiencing the bad helps us redefine the good, right? So I'd love for you to share kind of some of those experiences that are top of mind for you that you've had. Let me start with the good, because that's like what pops into my brain first. So I grew up in construction and banking. So I spent almost a decade in kind of more mature industries. And especially in construction, a lot of times I was the only woman in in any given room at the time. So I learned a lot from those experiences. And I think that the vibe that I mainly felt in that particular company and environment that I spent the kind of first six, seven years of my career was a company in Denver. And the vibe there was amazing. It was so empowering. And I think that the vibe that I felt was that they always believed in me long before I believed in myself. So I got promoted so many times inside of that organization, not because I necessarily was like the person that had the best knowledge to do this thing inside of their company, but because they just saw who I was as a human being and knew that I would work hard to make things happen for them. And so they just kind of put me in all of these new positions where I got to try all of these new things. So I felt so empowered. And my boss at that organization is still a great friend and mentor of mine. His name is Brad. And he just truly cared about me as a human being so much, so much so that like years later, like I've not worked for that organization for, I don't know, six, seven years now. And we're still in contact he wow. still sends me bit, like bits and pieces of inspiration. I still send him pictures of my kids and check in on him and see how he's doing. And like the fact that he cared so deeply as a human about all the people around him and gave those real opportunities inside of business to go try new things and be empowered to go make a difference for people, that like combination of things changed the trajectory of my career. So I'm super appreciative for them. How did you know he cared? Like, what were the small things or the day-to-day that made you know in your heart of hearts that he cared for you as a human being and not just like the work you produced? I'll give you like three quick examples. So the first one is while I was at that organization, I was in charge of starting our training and development programs from scratch. And after three years, we won an international award for the best training organization in the world. Number 19, number 20 was IBM. 
And here we were, this tiny little construction company based out of Colorado, coming in at number 19. And so we got to go to Washington, D.C. and accept this award. And he and the company paid for my husband to come with because he said, you worked so hard for this. And it's really important for me that you have someone with you who deserves to be there with you, too, because he's such a supporter of you. So that's number one. Number two is when I decided to leave that organization, I had just come back from maternity leave. And I realized how hard it was to have kids and not have any family around. And so I came back from maternity leave. I worked like three, four weeks maybe, and then sat down with him and said, I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm saying this. And I'm so devastated to be saying this, but I think it's time for me to move back to Kansas City. And at the time, remote work wasn't as common, particularly in construction, right? And so we knew that my employment was going to be coming to an end as well. But he supported me in that so wholeheartedly to the point where he set up interviews with people that he knew in Kansas City. And I landed my next job that way. So that's number two. Last quick example. Years later, I had been, I mean, we stayed in touch, but had not worked for him for years. And he knew that I have a ton of respect for Michelle Obama and her example as a working mom. And somehow he came across a signed copy of Michelle Obama's book and gifted it to me years after I had worked for him because he just knew how much that meant to me and like my journey as a working mom. So we just took time to like get to know who I was, what was important to me, and then did things that like benefited the company, but also just benefited me as a human. And he recognized those two things were intertwined. Yeah, I love that. Right. And like remembering what matters most to you, right? Like your family and the people you're inspired by and then remembering that for years to come. That's pretty cool. And I'd say very, very unique. I haven't experienced some a leader like that gosh, you know, even close to that in a very long time and maybe slightly close, but not quite. So that's really cool. Now, what's an experience that might not have been as ideal that you now put in your memory bank and you're like, that didn't feel good. That didn't create the right environment or atmosphere feeling for people to do their best and be their best. I did work for a leader in my career where I really struggled and the vibes were just not fantastic. And I think in that particular situation, when I was working for this person, one of the things that was really hard was being in an environment that this person, I think, was really fearful about like looking like the best inside of our team, even though they were in the C-suite. And so, like, for example, I would get in trouble when I would talk to other members of the C-suite without their approval, even though I was just one step removed, right? And I I remember in that situation, like, I am a people pleaser. I am an A-type high achiever. And I want to do a good job. And I want people to like me. And especially, like, my boss. I want my boss to think I'm great. You know, I want them to think I'm exceeding expectations and enjoy working with me. And this was the first time in my career where I could see this. That was like not the case with this person, but I didn't know how to fix it. But I wasn't the only person experiencing this. So I, I was like seeing this happening. But I constantly felt like I was in trouble. I constantly felt like I was doing things like where I was getting scolded. Like I would get long, you know, Microsoft Teams messages with like the things that I had done wrong in any oh. given day. And I just constantly felt like... I don't know what to do. Like, and I would ask, like, what can I be doing to be doing a better job? And the person couldn't give me real tangible feedback on things to do different. And so years later, now that I've had time to like separate from that experience, I've realized that it, and it's so much more to do with that particular person and their journey more than it did with how I was showing up in the workplace. And of course there were things that I could have done differently too. But I think the things that I learned is you have to sort your own stuff out as a leader before you can manage other people. And you have to constantly be on that journey of like challenging yourself about why you are doing things, why you're giving feedback to people and be thinking about like, am I doing this because this is really what's best for this person and this team? Or am I doing this because I'm fearful of how other people are perceiving me as a person? And I think that if it's like self-centered, it doesn't come from a place of like that human-based leadership that I gave in my first example, like that great experience that I had, right? So. I constantly felt like I was just smothered underwater, never felt like I could really like reach my potential and do the things that I wanted to do for the business I was working with because I just felt so 
in trouble all the time. So I've experienced that too. It probably made you second guess everything you did, even though you knew like this work product that you were delivering, you're like, I know this is the right thing. This is the best thing. This is goodness. But if you always were getting that feedback that you were in trouble or did something wrong, then you start to second guess and you can't even be your best self and your true authentic self. So like you've got the authenticity and the vulnerability in this one leader that was amazing. You probably did. Well, obviously you did. If you guys got on this list that got you to Washington, D.C., you created the department and then you go to this other leader that like you just constantly push down what you think is right to be true only to deliver. I'm not saying you didn't deliver your best work, but I you kind of trip over yourself to some degree, right? Yeah. And honestly, after I left that job, I was questioning like, Am I in the right career? Am I like, because it just shattered my self-confidence so much. And part of that's on me, right? Like I let that happen. And like I would lay awake at like three o'clock in the morning thinking like, how could I have had that conversation differently? Like what could I have done to like show up better myself and with this person? And how can I fix the situation? And after like working in that situation for that particular person for 18 months, I realized I can't smart my way out of the situation. I can't like, there's no, there's nothing else that I think I can do. And it's, it is knocking down my self-worth and my self-confidence. And so I needed to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then zoom out, right? I don't know how large the team was that that person was leading, but you think about like the zoom out and then from a company perspective, if there's how one person can be, I won't call it destructive, but like just not allowing people to be who they are and do their best work, like what that can do on a scale to productivity of a company, right? Like even if we don't talk about like just being a human, a good human being, but like productivity and ROI and all the things that organizations keep them floating, I think so often we underestimate the power of a vibe in the workplace and what it can actually do for growth of a human of a company, like of the world at large, right? Because we spend so much time at work. It's just, it's incredible. And I love hearing these stories of individuals because they're real and it happens. And you're one person, but like just, I, I can't even imagine the impact to the team, right? Yeah. I mean, imagine if most teams look like the first example that I shared. Right. Like our working world would be such a different place. And I think that there is like the tangible cost of like turnover. And even like, I think that you can connect that kind of employee disengagement or frustration with like customer churn, even to that point. But honestly, I think the biggest thing is opportunity cost. I think that there is so much missed opportunity on teams when people don't feel empowered to bring their whole selves to work. And I think that that in and of itself, like it, it changes the, the trajectory of an organization long-term in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And even like the human of like experiencing, like you said, you left and you're even second guessing yourself. Am I in the right career? Could you imagine if you change course or what that would look like differently in your life today and how you might not have blossomed into this awesome business that you have going now? So it's just so fascinating to me because it seems so simple, but yet it's like a mindset. And so to get people into that right mindset in order to allow others to flourish is just, I know it's delicate and I know it's dynamic, but maybe you can talk a little bit about what you're doing today to help change the face of organizations. Because I think that'd be really, really helpful to learn and understand. So I think that one of the biggest things is that people have really forgotten how to be human at work. Like, I think that we are so used to putting on this like professional face and going into work. And a lot of that was really shaken up during the pandemic when work and life kind of like blended in so closely together. And now post pandemic, I think so many people are trying to figure out like, what does work look like for organizations, for organizational cultures, whether they're remote or hybrid? or try and go back in person. Like, I just think that there's so many questions about how we should be making vibes at work. And so I'm relaunching my business, Ever Leader. I just, I spent the last two years with an incredible leadership tech startup and really joined, enjoyed my time there as well. But I have just recently gone back on my own again and really focusing right now on keynote speaking and bringing a message to organizations, thinking about how we want to be human inside of the workplace again, 
and how we can bring authenticity and deeper connections to make work better. So I've been kind of on the keynote trail for a little bit now, really leaning into that side of things. I also do workshops with teams and things like that. So that's kind of like my short-term thing. And long-term, I just started the process of writing a new book. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about focusing on doing some research about how we can connect organizations with the future of work and how we can bring humanity back into the workplace as we continue into the journey of what's next. And I think the biggest thing that I, as I'm relaunching my business that I've been thinking a lot about is how to help organizations do leadership development in a way that really sits inside of their businesses in a little bit of a different um, way than a traditional leadership development firm. So I'm such a big fan of taking a look at an organization at like a holistic level and seeing like, for example, what are they what are they putting out there as far as like external branding and their value proposition to customers? Like what's attracting those people in? And does that align with their leadership team and their mission and their values and the behaviors that this leadership team is representing? And how is that translated then to what employees are experiencing? Because our team members inside of our organizations are the ones that are actually talking to our customers in the first place. So If they're not feeling the same brand messaging internally that they're putting out externally, there's going to be challenges from a business perspective in the ways that you retain your customer base and even continue to grow as an organization. So I am looking into what it means to relaunch my business more as a leadership agency that can help organizations get more alignment in all of those levels. And speaking of like vulnerability and authenticity, well, I saw on LinkedIn your pink suit. And I just, I, I love it. I think it's so awesome. It just says so many things. And we, you were stating, you know, working in construction, that's probably something you would have never done. But as you've kind of gone on this journey to be you and leading your business and standing up there in this pink suit during this keynote, tell me the vibe that you believe that created with the people that you were speaking to. Yeah, I think that I've always felt a little bit scared of having too loud of a voice. And I do think that comes from, like, I I grew up in the Midwest. There's a lot of, like, humility and work ethic that comes inside of this type of a, an environment, which I so value and appreciate the hard work ethic that my parents instilled in me. And there's also this humility that comes with it that I, like, took with me into the world of construction and banking where I didn't want to be too loud a lot of the time. Like, I didn't want to use my voice in ways that made people feel uncomfortable or that push the boundaries of work. And the longer I got have been in my career, the more I feel comfortable using my voice in those kind of ways because I have experienced things in my career that I don't want my four-year-old daughter to experience. I want the working world to look different by the time she gets there in 15 years. And so I think that putting on the pink suit for me personally was this feeling of like embracing the discomfort of my own journey of becoming someone who I don't want to be seen as someone that's like a blonde young woman who doesn't know what she's talking about. And so I think I strayed away from like a bright pink power suit because I thought (laughs) that's not what you wear if you're trying to be like serious and someone who's to be respected inside of construction and banking. But it does kind of represent the things that I believe in, which is like women are amazing and like I'm a working mom and I believe that you can have both things in life. I believe that you can be present with your kids and pursue an incredible career where you have impact. And so me putting that on was like an example of me saying, I don't really care what the world thinks anymore. I'm just going to like try to do things and make change. And then I think that people are attracted to that authenticity when they see it. They're like, I want to be that too. I want to step into my own, whatever that looks like for them. Right. So I think me wearing the hot pink power suit is just like permission for other people to be just a little bit more authentic too. Yeah, no, I love that. And it's wild to me that people need permission, but I'll share this with others that I work with in my consulting business too, is like, if you need permission, then you have my permission. But I don't think you need permission to do this. I think you need to sit back and think about why you need that in order to move forward and be you. Because I think if you were just you from the beginning, without me stepping in to say, you have my permission to do so, just imagine the possibilities. And I always think, you know, my mission in life is to help people see what's possible. 
it first started in the HR space because I think that HR people have a bad rap. The perception is like HR, right? But then as you start stepping into the gap of like your authentic self, then others start to say like, oh yeah, well, I don't have to be bad or I don't have to be this like, you know, bad voice within an organization. I can actually be me. I can change the face of what it looks like and then empower others to do the same. And I think that's just so incredible. Just stand out, be bold. And, you know, I always say too, like, I'm not for everyone. So that's okay too. I don't need to be for everyone. And I think too, like, even with that, I get a lot of messages on LinkedIn, like people after I post things and after I've really stepped more into my authentic voice and got kind of got on this journey of entrepreneurship as well and joining Startup Land, all of these things of people sending me messages and saying like, you are just, you're so brave the way you put yourself out there and your authenticity is so refreshing. And honestly, at first I kind of let, like thought, I don't see what they're seeing. Like, I don't see me being brave and authentic. I'm just being me. And then I realized, oh, wait a second, like that is brave in today's society. And there are a lot of people that don't feel safe to do the same. And I think that there's lots of different reasons for that. Some of those are like systemic. Some of those are self-limiting, right? Like the, this belief that we can't do this thing, but no one else has told us that. We just have it in our head, right? But I think that we, there's this world that exists on the other side of future generations of work where it's not as commendable or applaudable to be authentic at work. Like my hope would be that there's this world where that's just the norm for everyone to feel safe, to be able to show up as who they are, still professional, but as who they are and adding value. Like those two things can coexist together. Like professionalism and authenticity can coexist. But so many times we like block out one with the other. And there's so much opportunity in this world, right? I think probably more opportunity than when you and I entered into corporate America, if you will, right? With like gig economy and the pandemic has created some great opportunity also of like people exploring their passion and purpose and doing things to make a living that aren't in the nine to five. And it's an interesting dynamic of like what has been and what could be. Yeah. And I think to that point too, because we are swaying towards a gig economy, like I do think that the gig economy is going to continue to grow over time. And then organizations, even though unemployment rates look like they're continuing to be higher, I think that what's going to happen is organizations will still be looking for more talent. But because there are more people that are going out there, like I see so many fractional, you know, CMOs or marketing folks or product folks or HR folks. And that that kind of side of things where people are being more willing to go out there and try to make it on their own, organizations are going to have to find ways to create that kind of a better vibe so that they can truly attract the type of talent that they want, even potentially pulling from the gig economy kind of bank of folks. Yeah. And then it's like, how do you train them? How do you develop them when they're not, you don't own them in a sense, right? And it looks completely yeah. different than what has come before. Yeah. It requires like a new level of leadership skill that most organizations, I don't think, are preparing their teams for at this point in time. Yeah, I know. And I think that I I had a conversation with a friend of mine and he was saying that going like being forced to go remote really exposed organizations and their leadership or lack of leadership capabilities because the touch point during the pandemic when everyone was remote, the touch point that most people had to experience the vibe of their organization was their leader. That's who they talked to the most. That's who they experienced. And so whatever that leader was like was the experience that their team got. And it's such an interesting thing to think about because before it was there was probably more culture that was created and vibes that were created in an office setting that whether you like it or not, there is chit chat and there is interacting and connecting with people. But when the only connection is your leader on the phone, wow, like the exposure of the gaps is quite probably frightening, I would imagine. Yeah. And I think that's why so many organizations right now feel very fractured and siloed, because if you weren't thoughtful about creating like a leadership brand for your organization of like, this is who we are as leaders here. And this is like the values that we're going to represent on a regular basis. When you have folks that are remote or even hybrid for that matter, every leader, their skills become so much more critical 
And each employee's experience is so dependent on that leader. So when you have leaders that are all at different stages yes. and levels and doing different things, yeah, you no longer have a cohesive culture or experience. So I think the answer is in getting people to understand and build with you. I think it's really important to have everybody together saying, here's the consensus of who we want to be as leaders inside of this company and how we're going to represent those values on a day in, day out basis so that folks can really understand like, what do you do in a situation when you need to give hard feedback? Like, how do we do that as a company? So it's the same, no matter whether you work in accounting or in product, right? Yeah. Like, it's like many companies have like a philosophy around compensation, right? But it's like a leadership philosophy. Like, what is it? How do we act? How do we move forward? How do we interact? How do we connect? So, so, so fascinating. Because um, it kind of just like haphazardly happened, I would say. Not for everybody, but for many. I think it did. And then I think... A lot of people made it work, more or less, for quite a while. Right. Um, <laughs> until we saw the great resignation and a whole bunch of people leaving as a result of that, right? And it's such a dynamic environment because the economy is continually changing as well. So the market reacts to that, the changing economy, the job market does. And at the same time, like, it's going to continue to flex over time. And I don't think that the, the need for a stable or consistent leadership voice inside of organizations is going to change over time. I think it's just going to become more and more critical, particularly with the rise of like automated systems and AI and changes in tech, like the human skills that we're going to need are going to be even more important when we have even faster moving technology inside of an organization. 100% agree. Yeah. Okay. So what do you say for people listening would be like the one piece of advice that you would give them walking away from this conversation that they can start today and they can just, as I like to say, try it out or try it on. No different than like trying on some clothes, right? To see if it works for them, to experience it, see how it feels, see if it's like them being their true authentic self. What's that one thing? Yeah. One of the things that I love to do is before I go into any meeting or like even before this podcast or what have you, I take a sticky note and I write down three words like who do I want to be in this moment for these people that I'm going to be with. And I think that one of the things that's really helpful about that is we move in such a fast paced world. And when you're not intentional about setting your goals for how you want to show up for people in your life whether this is at work or even like with my kids at home, if we're not intentional and slow down, even just for a fraction of a second, like write down a couple of words about who we want to be in that moment, then I think that we no longer have control over who we want to be. We just respond in the moment. So to get proactive, yeah, I recommend just like taking a sticky note or, you know, spend a minute and just write down a couple of words of who do I want to be in this next situation that I'm in. So it just holds us accountable in a slightly different way. Because we get to the end of it, we look at it, and we say, oh, yeah, I was warm. I was kind. I was open, whatever the three parts are. And it changes the way that we see ourselves and lets us embrace our authenticity in a more intentional way. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Now, are you willing to share the three words that you wrote down on your sticky note before this? Yeah. So my three were warm and confident and kind. I love it. I think you were all three of those in more ways than I could imagine. <laughs> Christy. That's very kind. So awesome. Okay, now we're going to do something a little bit fun to make this a little bit more human too, to learn a little bit more about you. So I'll start out with beach or mountains? Mm, mountains. I lived in Denver for almost 10 years and love the mountains. Love it. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Yes. Cappuccinos to be exact. Oh, okay. Are you morning or night person? Morning, that's typically the time I get in my workout, and I love my my workouts. Awesome. Cats or dogs? Cats, 1,000%. <laughs> awesome. Graham, Graham, do you have a cat? <laughs> I do. He's very old and grumpy. His name is Sir Thomas Dickens, but yes, he is, oh. <laughs> he is my baby. My other, I had another one as well. She passed on a couple of years ago. Okay. And Netflix or like live theater? Ooh. Lately, I would say live theater. I have had the extreme blessing of seeing multiple live shows in London and New York this year. And it's just totally revived my love for, I think that there's actually, I was actually doing some research on the neuroscience behind why you feel so good after you see something live in a group with other people. 
And there, there is actually a part in your, like in the limbic system in our brain that when we're around other people and experiencing the same thing as them, you have higher receptors, like between your amygdala and your hippocampus. Those levels actually go up more when you're around another group of people doing the same thing as you than is when you're just like at home. And so I think that that is why you feel like you feel like this like invisible community that you don't notice or recognize. But I think that it's there and you're like they're experiencing it in the same way and different ways as all these people you don't know. And it's really beautiful. Yeah. Which just goes into like the science behind connection and how important that is, right? Because if there's like a physical response to connecting with people you don't know, imagine the world of continuing to connect with people that you do know. Well, I am just like so grateful that you've taken the time to chat with me and share your experiences. And I'm so excited for what you have to come in this new chapter of your life. Uh, literally and figuratively, right? In your book and with your company. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I can't wait to follow along in the journey and I hope others do as well. So thank you for sharing everything that you did today, being vulnerable. And I can't wait to see that pink suit on more stages. Thank you so much, Christy. Thank you for having me. This was really nice. Wow. Can you believe three words on a post-it can change your mindset? how you show up in the world and what outcomes happen because of it, believe it. It's so simple, doesn't cost anything, and something everyone can start doing right now. I just love how the simplest things can have such a big impact. I'm so grateful for Megan and her sharing this piece of advice and how it lives in her world. My three words on my post-it today are confidence, compassion, and pause. Because sometimes we all just need to stop, think, and then take action. I can't wait to hear the stories of others trying this out. If this episode inspired you and you want to see how you can take the next step to creating a better vibe within your organization, I'd love for you to download our complimentary 75 Vibes worksheet. This is a simple tool to create a habit and mindset around creating great vibes in work and life. The best part, it's simple and it works. 